Hello traders, Gary Wagner here, approximately 8.30 in Honolulu. It is Friday, the 11th day of the 11th month of the 11th year, and this is the daily report for gold and silver, our weekend review. And oh, what a week we have seen. It certainly did not lack for excitement. Of course, my daily subscribers know we got in on the 5th, roughly at 1739. We did trail our stops up. We were stopped out in a profit at about 1768. So a $29 profit on the trade. But I did send out a special alert this morning. And when it was clear to me that this market had found support, we re-entered the market. Traders that took that call are in anywhere between at the low end 1766 and 1770. Those That was the range when that email went out. I'll post it at 1770. Of course, the market is just up, up and away, up in double digits again, currently trading 1786, 1787. I want to start today's report with a couple of daily charts that I have just submitted for my most current commentary for Kitco.com. And I want to spend a moment with you and go through a more detailed expression of my observations. And here is really what I have been tackling with over the last couple of weeks. And that's the basic wave count that we're looking at. It is absolutely clear to me that as we went into this major fifth wave, we got this ABC where even though five was below the price top of B, that our A and our B, this is what's called, a, this would be the orthodox top and this was the actual top. There's no doubt that we had an ABC correction. However, the timeline that that took, meaning when we look at a market, call it mid-August to, to mid to the end of September, in other words, a month in time, is typically not the time frame needed to complete the entire major ABC correction. Considering that some of these impulse waves, when we look at the time structure, might go from for example, the fifth wave, July, and traded from July all the way through September. So it's very quick when we consider the timeline. However, when we consider the retracement numbers, in other words, how far that market moved, it actually falls within defined parameters that are acceptable. Because when we look at this last major rally, and that's in July, we saw the market run from about 15, just below it, to 19, $400 move. We then witnessed a market that dropped almost to the entire rally itself. When you look at this, what you're seeing is you had more than a 61%. You had basically a 78% retracement of the most recent wave. And if we do a Fibonacci retracement from this entire cycle, which began in February, and then we take that to the top, what you'll see is that even with that consideration, you still have a marketplace which, as it moved from, call it 1300 plus, all the way to 1900, that's a $600 move, it then came down 61% of that move. It's, it's a tremendous, tremendous move. It falls within those guidelines. And that being said, if in fact we have completed this major correction, the ABC, in other words, it is my contention right now that this intermediate count might in fact be a major count within this entire cycle. And the good news is that if in fact that is correct, we have just weathered a huge storm. More importantly, we've entered the beginning of a large impulse cycle. Well, what does that mean? Well, what that means is that we could see silver, excuse me, gold now run 
2100, 2200, and do that over the next year because the size or magnitude, the price moves that we see typically in these cycles, as we'll look at on our next chart, are absolutely that kind of a move. You're talking about a four or $500 move. Gold has roughly been doubling every three years. It's simply put, is on a tear. So what am I looking at right now? My current belief is that if in fact we're in the impulse cycle, we will know. Because the way that we'll know is that if it's still in a correction and if this is a larger B, this B will not exceed 75%. That's very atypical of a market. So if the market would have continued to drop or if this current rally stalls below this point and then begins to drift lower, then ladies and gentlemen, we could still experience a major C wave. We're not out of the woods yet. However, if this market takes out this area, 1830, and begins to threaten the record high and go to breach 1900 again, which I believe is absolutely possible, it would need to do that with a huge fifth wave here. One, it would take out this particular area, that 75%, and that would give credence and evidence to the assumption that the correction is in fact over. Which brings me to this chart. It's an oldie but goodie. It's simply been updating itself we have done this work. This was done originally for a commentary that was created one month ago. I also included it in the current commentary because I think that it's just as relevant today, if not more so. And so what are we looking at in terms of a longer range and longer term forecast? Here's what I can observe. And that is as follows. When we take a look at our basic cycles. And when I talk about our cycles, I'm going from typically the beginning of an A wave to the conclusion, which would be one, two, three, four, five. When I measure the distance from the beginning of the rally to the bottom, and then create what's called a Fibonacci extension, an extension is simply the opposite of a retracement. So rather than moving down in a bullish market, we extend from that price target, you're going to find some very interesting numbers continually occurring again and again. So a 38% extension of this move takes you to 1439. And as you can see, it was absolutely 100% indicative of the price top of the rally that we saw from February 2010 to November 2011, this last major rally that we saw. Now, when we consider the fact that once that rally had occurred, we would then look at a new target and the next target would be measuring this area. And the interesting thing here is when we do an extension, we got two pretty interesting pieces of information. This is a 23% extension and a 123% extension. Because what I noticed is that depending on the velocity of the price ascent, in other words, the angle, how quickly it's moving up, you will typically get a market in a slower rally that will extend 38%. But if you then look at, for example, the 123% extension, well, that price target right in here was not that far off from our current record high. In other words, it took two cycles for the Fibonacci extension to go into these double digits, so to speak, the 123, the 138. Now, when we look at this particular rally, and we take 123% extension, the top is 1919. Well, that's pretty darn close again. In other words, these numbers time and time again are evident in price forecasting models. So again, what am I doing? I'm simply extending that same type of information, that same logic in those same equations, 
This time I am looking at the rally from, again, from the beginning of the A wave, the wave one, excuse me, and to the top of wave five. A 38% extension, which would be equivalent to this price move, would take us to 2156. 103% extension would take us to 2676. Timeline, again, we're not looking at something that far out. We're looking at something that could absolutely occur middle towards the third quarter of 2012. Am I overly optimistic? No, I think I'm being absolutely realistic, especially with our low target at 2156. Traders, there can be no doubt that given the fundamental factors driving this market right now, it is my contention and belief that gold in the long run, the long run, avoiding the noise and the intraday volatility has nowhere to go but up. So what about silver? Well, silver is going to typically follow in the footsteps of its big brother gold. And so we will see that market react accordingly. We are still in our position roughly uh, 50 cents below this. And what we spoke about yesterday is actually coming into fruition. And that is this alternating set of signals that are really illegible when you look at the market on even a daily basis at that short term. Because as we talked about, you had the three river evening, now we have a three river morning. My belief is that we still have a major hurdle. We've talked about this for the last couple of weeks. We have to see a trade and close above $35. That being said, I see clear sailing to 38. There's really no real resistance until just below it. And I would peg it with these candles here and here to show those typical areas. I look at my upper end targets at about $40 per ounce, and I believe that these targets are achievable by the first quarter of 2012. Markets never, never lack for interesting observations. The dollar index, again, under significant pressure, as you can see, this big sell-off, this in a star formation, again, a three river evening star variation. And then lastly, if I do have this up and available, I want to take a look at the equities markets, the standard and poor. And here we have our daily chart, but this is in Hinken format. It's a Hinken Ashi chart. In other words, it is a Japanese average chart. And the interesting thing about the daily charts with the S&Ps is you can get some very, very clear signals when the market begins to run. And as you can see, the nature of the way they are created and drawn, you get these vast long periods of solid red. Even when it's range bound, you can see that it has a defined pattern to it, although a very, very hard one to forecast. This has been most difficult for many analysts that I work with that follow the S&P. My sense was that we hit our bottom and we are moving higher. I personally think that this marketplace itself will go and test highs above $1,300. This has been Gary Wagner wishing you as always good trading. Maintain your long position in gold and your long position in silver. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on Monday for another daily review and update. Bye-bye.